Researchers argue that the chief influence behind the United Nations is an organization known as the Theosophical Society, considered by some to be the most powerful occult organization in the modern world. The Theosophical Society has had more influence on the United Nations than any other religious society, whether you would call it Christian or occult. The House of Theosophy, as it is called, was founded by a woman known as Madame H.P. Blavatsky. Madame Blavatsky was a mystic, and she had truly supernatural powers. She had a tremendous impact on people, and was able to recruit many of the world's leading people into her organization, people like Arthur Colan Doyle, who wrote the, uh, the great stories about uh, Sherlock Holmes, Thomas Edison. Uh, was one of her disciples, as was William Stead, who was uh, one of the dis three, four original members of the secret society, Cecil Rhodes created, which became the Council on Foreign Relations. Many key people, you know, in the 19th century joined theosophy, as in the 20th century, Margaret Sanger and Adolf Hitler uh, were disciples of theosophy, uh, uh, as uh, are people uh, like... Um, um, of Robert Mueller for, for many years was the Assistant Secretary General of the United Nations because the major driving force behind the idea of the United Nations and world government is the occult. In 1888, Blavatsky published her now famous work, The Secret Doctrine, a book revered by occult practitioners all over the world. Adolf Hitler reportedly slept with a copy of this book at his bedside. Blavatsky subtitled the work, The Synthesis of Science, Religion, and Philosophy. The secret doctrine is filled with ancient mystery wisdom that more than a century later continues to hold New Age readers spellbound. There's no way that it will girl uh, with a sixth or seventh grade education could possibly have written this. Uh, these volumes were channeled to her by uh, a demonic spirit she called Kut Humi. And uh, she actually traveled to um, Tibet, uh, to India, and she claims that she actually went to Tibet and actually met her master there. Kut Humi is the name given to a Tibetan spirit master who was Blavatsky's teacher in her lifetime. Blavatsky is pictured here with some of the masters or spirit beings she communed with and admired, Kuthumi, El Moria, and Saint Germain. Under the mysterious orders of such spirits, Blavatsky's mission was to bring a philosophical understanding to unexplained phenomena, such as the mysterious wrappings and other spirit communication that had been occurring in the West. Blavatsky maintained that spiritualistic phenomena without the philosophy of occultism, were dangerous and misleading. For this apparent reason, the spirit beings directly commanded Blavatsky to begin the Theosophical Society. The official website of the society in Adyar, India, says that the Theosophical Society may be said to have begun when H.P. Blavatsky, under orders of the masters, returned from India in 1871 to found an organization through which the West and the world in general would be instructed in true spirituality. The official birthday of the society came four years later in 1875 with a formal declaration from Henry S. Alcott, the president and co-founder of the organization. Blavatsky's House of Theosophy would formalize what began as the New Thought Movement into a religious system that would dramatically change the Western view of God and his relationship to mankind. While early America recognized the gospel of Jesus Christ as the only path to salvation, theosophical teachings argued for the essential oneness of all religions and the omnipresence of divine spirit. Theosophy declares that it was formed upon the basis of a universal brotherhood of humanity. Yet Blavatsky would teach far more than a universal brotherhood. She would take the New Thought movement to the next dimension, fully exposing the source of its power in her voluminous writings. These volumes were channeled to her. And uh, they're very, very complex, they're very erudite, uh, but if you read them, you'll find out uh, that she has rejected the God of the Bible and embraced Lucifer. 
and she's quite open about that. She did uh, emphasize Satan as being the true God and, and Satan beckoning Adam and Eve to partake of the fruit. She, she was really tr he was really turning them on to true Godhood and he's the one who really freed the human race in Blavatsky's teaching. According to Blavatsky, Satan was in fact God while Jehovah, the God of the Bible, was the real devil and enemy of mankind. Blavatsky wrote that the appellation Satan belongs by right to the first and cruelest adversary of all other gods, Jehovah, not to the serpent which spoke only words of sympathy and wisdom. Elsewhere she writes that Satan, the serpent of Genesis, is the real creator and benefactor, the father of spiritual mankind, for it is he who opened the eyes of the automaton Adam, created by Jehovah. In the secret doctrine, she says, in antiquity and reality, Lucifer or Luciferus is the name of the angelic entity presiding over the light of truth as over the light of the day. Lucifer is divine and terrestrial light, the Holy Ghost and Satan at one and the same time. And now it stands proven, she says, that Satan or the red fiery dragon, the Lord of Phosphorus, and Lucifer, or light bearer, is in us. It is our mind, our tempter and redeemer, our intelligent liberator and savior from pure animalism. And for demons to channel her writings to her, uh, and uh, of course she wrote about world government, the importance of world government, and uh, the idea that that Mankind, at least Western civilization, began with the Aryan, and the Aryan came out of Tibet. And of course, if you've ever read anything about Adolf Hitler and Heinrich Himmler, why they actually sent expeditions to Tibet looking for the origins of Aryan man. And there were strong ties between the SS and this whole idea of this, uh, this uh, Superman that they were trying to create and the writings of Madame Blavatsky. The entire basis of, of the Nazi movement was founded on theosophy and her writings. And of course, the symbol that she used, the swastika, is what Adolf Hitler uh, used as the symbol of the Nazi movement. But the average individual does not understand the relationships between Madame Blavatsky's writing and her worship of Lucifer and her accessing the other dimensions and what happened in Germany and Adolf Hitler. Time magazine did a whole thing on the New Age movement with uh, you know, with crystals and, you know, talking about all the different New Age phenomena that became very popular in the 80s and is still with us to, to this day. And Shirley MacLaine was on the front cover holding the crystals. And, and uh, in that piece, they talked about, uh, in the introduction of that piece at the beginning of the magazine, they talked about how we don't know where the term New Age came from or where it's going. Well, the Bible tells us, Jesus said in the last days there would be this false, you know, this religious movement which would be saying the time draws near, which would be predicting a new age uh, and would, which would have its basis in satanic or false miracles, which is what the New Age movement's all about. Uh, so we know where it's going. In 1904, a man named Aleister Crowley channeled a spirit who inspired a series of writings known as the Book of the Law. According to the introduction of the work, the book was dictated in Cairo, Egypt, between noon and 1 p.m. on three successive days. The author, a demonic spirit, called himself Iwas and claimed to be a messenger from the forces ruling this earth at present. This description is quite revealing since Jesus referred to Satan as the prince or ruler of this world. Satan is also called the God of this world by the Apostle Paul. In this book of the law, Crowley set down the chief principle for what he called the new eon. He wrote, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. There is no law beyond do what thou wilt. This declaration is in contrast to the example of Christ in the Bible. In the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus prayed, Father, not as I will, but as thou wilt, in obedience to God. But in the book of the law, Crowley turns the tables and teaches men, not as God wills, but rather, do what thou wilt. This promotion of self-will that so often leads to self-empowerment is perhaps the climax of man's desire to be his own God, to rule over himself, 
rather than live in obedience to the God who created him. Jesus said, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it.